Lights and Drinks all the way from the Portland Commodore User Group. Hurrah! So hey, I'm Greg, and um, I'm the developer of the Comet 64, and you might have heard about other things like the Comet Plus, which um, I won't get into too much today. Well, probably not at all, but it's, it's kind of been this long process, and uh, what I decided to do, I ran out of Comet 64s, and um, people still wanted to keep buying them, so what I decided to do was make a new board and um, uh, supply the need for those, as well as trying to um, come up with a way to um, continue working on the Comet Plus. And what I did was I ended up making a board that supported a lot of the Plus features so that I could work on the firmware while also supporting the Comet 64. Anyway, those all ran out, and then what I had to do was um, create a new version because um, I, I kind of got figured out what I wanted to do with, with the Plus, which was the, the IC connector, which um, allows you to get to the internet with the, with the IC, the serial port, um, or the serial bus, and then, um, Anyway, some of the plus features I wanted to, to work on, and this new version um, had to remove an existing part from the original Comet 64 because it was kind of buggy and people were getting problems with their Comets, the original Comet 64, because I was using a third-party module that, that their firmware would, would lock up and, and it would just become unresponsive. So I wanted to... Um, just completely get rid of that and, and write the firmware myself that basically did the exact same thing as that original module. Um, and that's coming along pretty well. Um, it's going to be pretty much an exact copy of their firmware. I mean, it will support all of the same features and work the same way. <coughs> so um, in doing all that, um, I was able to remove that piece and, then, and I was able to kind of refine this board into three separate products. Um, and I have three separate products because there's there's kind of a different need than just buy one device that's expensive to do whatever you may want to do with it. Um, I broke it down into three products, um, which, which um, makes sense because then you can have a cheaper product. Um, well, let me just get into what they are. So uh, this is a prototype of of the upcoming Comet 64 slash Comet BBS slash Comet Drive. So it's a three thing in one. Uh, it's not actually a three thing in one, it's three separate ones. And um, <coughs> what do I want to say? The Comet BBS, you already know about the Comet 64, right? So that's basically a user port device that, that gets on the internet and you can play games and connect to BBSs and stuff like that. The second product is the Comet BBS, which is designed to plug into your 64, and it is a Haze-compatible modem. Um, so that means that you can start running your BBS, and it will work just as expected because uh, the software for the BBS um, issues AT commands and stuff like that, and this will respond to that and allow it to just work without any extra... Um, computer, usually they hook up a 64 to a device to the internet or they hook up a 64 to a device to a c computer or something like that and running a TCP server or a BBS server or something like that. But that would eliminate the need for that. You just plug this in and, and it will support everything the BBS needs. Um, furthermore, it has a standard RS-232 connector on it. This is actually a male version. It should be a female version. Um, because it's a modem, and um, you can use this with any computer. It doesn't even have to be a 64. So you, whatever RS-232 you can put into this thing, it, it, it will act as a modem for that. Um, and that's on the Comet BBS as well. Uh, it also has a USB port, and the USB port, the main intent for that is to be able to do firmware upgrades easily. but. Um, if I ever discover a way to make it useful for the device, you know, there could be a future uh, firmware upgrade to support USB somehow. 
Um, <clears throat> it's also got this OLED display, um, and it's on a wire right now, but it will be affixed permanently to the board at, you know, once I get my final design done. And then um, it, it just prints out nice information for you when you're using the device. <clears throat> Next, uh, I think that covers the Comet BBS part. Let's see. Yeah. The next, de the next device I'll talk about is the Comet Drive, which is basically um, a disk drive. It runs standalone. It doesn't have to be plugged into the computer. This connector doesn't even have to be on it. Um, it can mount in a case or in, in a computer or whatever, and it will just act like a disk drive. And how it works is it has, um, it has the IEC connector on it, and when you, when you load something off of, um, off of the device, well, okay, there, there's two devices in one. So there's an internet side and there's a local <coughs> disk drive side. And when you load off the internet side, it, it will load streaming data off the internet as if you're loading from a disk drive. And the other part is uh, it has onboard flash that you can store programs and, and whatnot on the device itself. And you can load off of this like it's a disk drive. And uh, you don't have to load off the internet if you don't have an internet connection. Um, let's see, what else? Um, the Comet drive will not have the, the RS-232 connector on it because that doesn't really make sense. Um, there's no standard for loading off of other computers in that, in that same way. Um, and then the Comet 60, oh yeah, did I get that? Did I get all the features of the drive? It also has the USB on it. Um, yeah. So then there's the Comet 64, which um, again works in the exact same way that the original Comet 64 worked. And that is, it, it's um, a user port device. It connects to the internet. Any software that you have <coughs> that uses an RS-232 user port to internet um, program will work the same way. Um, It also will have the IEC connector on it, but unlike the drive, it will not contain the flash on board. So what that means is you can use the IEC connector to load, to stream off of the internet, but you'll always have to stream it. There's no local storage for the, for the Comet 64. But the advantage to that is um, there's a lot of, there's, there's a need to load some kind of driver or software in order to use the user port on the 64. Um, so the advantage is that you can load that boot sequence or the driver off of the IEC connector or the serial bus, and then you get your drivers loaded without having to have a separate disk or anything like that. Um, all three devices will have the display. All three devices will have a, um, there's a chip that's not on here at the moment, but it's a static RAM, 128K of static RAM that you can use for whatever you want. Part, part of it will be used by the firmware, um, and part of it will be available for the user to use um, through commands. You can you can store data on flash, or I mean, I mean on the in the RAM. Um, okay, so that about describes it. Any questions so far about any of the devices that I've explained? Yeah. On the, the drive side of it, is it all? So it's, it's the firmware has all of it. It already integrated the stack, everything, the translation to go from IEC to the Ethernet, the yes. socket. Anything else? Yes. I can't hear anything you're saying. Move closer, please. Josh, move closer. Uh, All right, I'll try to speak louder. Yes. So does the um, Comet Drive also have a the the um, connector? The um, this. The um, the other one, the one you're, in your thumb. This. Yeah, that one. No, this, no, this the. the Oh, user, user port. port. Yeah, no, user port. Uh, it won't have that on there okay. because there's no need to to put it in your user port. It yeah. can just run standalone. It has all the power yeah. on board and everything. Is there a way to get everything in one rather than buying Good question. separate um, units? The question was, is there a way to get everything in one? Um, the, main, the main answer I want to say is no because what I did was I did a fundraiser to kind of finance 
this device. And um, what I did was I allowed 12 people to buy into the fundraiser, and those 12 people each got a, an all-in-one device. So th those 12 people will get, um, and did get, um, a board that had the functionality of all three things at the same time. So that's called the Golden Comet, and there's only 12 of them in existence. Uh, how great was the, uh, was that done through Kickstarter, or you just did that privately? It is privately. Oh, privately. So yeah. you didn't make mention of this to anybody else? I, I mentioned it in IRC, possibly, mm. and to select people who already had expressed interest mm. in because funding. Because I'm sure there would have been, you know, much more, you know, public interest if you had spread yeah. the news more publicly. Yeah, probably so, but this kind of made it special for, oh, okay. for that yeah. reason. Um, so, th so the, the short answer was no, but the long answer is um, likely everything is going to be open source, so that would not necessarily stop somebody from adding the other components necessary and downloading all the source code and compiling their own version of that. So, and I'm sure people will do that and release it, that's probably okay too. Yeah. What are you doing with the display? What, what is it showing? Okay, well I can, I can demo that, but it's, its main purpose is to just show you status things. Um, there's, a, there's a user button that can be pressed that will cycle through different um, features that you can set and the display is useful to show you what you're setting, like changing your device number, for example. Um, all right, so first thing I'm gonna do is show you the Comet BBS. Um, I don't have the full AT command supported yet, so I can't show you it working as a BBS, but I can show it working with some of the AT commands that I've already implemented, and also we can connect to a BBS with the ATD dial command. We'll do that real quick. the 64, I'm, I'm relying completely on external power. Um, one reason is that the, the draw is a little a little high, at least it was on, on the original comets, and I wanted to not have people have to worry about that. Um, an interesting thing that I wasn't fully sure if it would work or not was whether you could power the device with um, USB, and that works really well. So I just plug in my USB mini from my laptop, and that turns on the device. So that's, the display is kind of weird on this wire, but you can get the idea with something heavy on it. is load up um, CCGMS because it's just a terminal program and I can type commands and I can allow you to see the AT commands working and, and whatnot. Um, so here we are and I just pushed enter and it said command not understood and that's because when the device powers on it, it first makes a connection to Commodore server which is the main entry point, if you will. Um, it, Commodore server is a place where you can store your own disk images, and it also has services for online gaming and whole host of things, chat and all kinds of stuff. So, um, so when it turns on, it connects to Commodore server. And I just pushed enter, which sent, sent a blank command to the server, and the server didn't understand it, and it said, I don't understand. So um, what I want to do is go into the AT command set, command mode, and you do that with plus, plus, plus. And then now, now we can type AT commands, so like, it would just give you no and it does. I can turn on and off echo, ATE0, turns echo off, 
which means you can't see what I'm typing. Um, and when echo is off, it usually relies on the server side to basically send back what you type to it. Um, so I'll turn it back on just so you can see. ATE1 turns it back on. Um, not a, really a whole lot of commands to show, I guess, but um, ATD is uh, dial. And I'm going to connect to this um, BBS called Scorps Portal. And it's address I got over here already. Port 23. So what I'm doing is I'm dialing. There's no phone lines involved. It's all over the internet. I'm just dialing the IP address and the port. So it says it connected to this to his BBS. <coughs> but did it really? Oh yeah, there we go. So as you can see, the, the Comet BBS can also just be used as a client-side device. It doesn't actually have to even be used as a BBS host. Um, it's just a modem. And if you have old computers like an Atari or an Apple, um, like I said before, you can use that uh, DE9 connector to um, use this as a modem as well. So let's see. So this guy's BBS server is in China. But as you can see, it's just a fun way to to go out and connect to different BBSs out there. Yeah. Is it APIC clean as far as the data transfer up in the uh, comment session that it's making? You can actually send, you could actually do file transfers like X modem or, yeah. or, yeah. or something? Yeah, so your terminal program has the support for X modem or punter or whatever. And, and then this guy actually uses punter. And I think CCGMS supports that. I'm just curious if there was an escape character that would cause potential problems or something. No. OK. No. So once you're in the AT mode, you can't go back to the Commodore mode or Commodore server mode? Um, so you asked if you could go back to Commodore server um, after being on a BBS. You can by dialing it again or power cycling it. Okay. Uh, power cycling it would get you back there because that's what it connects to first. But but when you're done with the BBS, you can do your ATH hang up command. Um, usually it would just kick you off anyway when you log out. Um, or you can, and then you can do an ATD to dial back to Commodore server. Um, I have a, I think it's 10 entry phone book built into the Comet BBS so that you can just do ATD1 for phone book entry one. Um, and you can set those however you like to connect to wherever you want. <coughs> so, I don't really need to show you the BBS or anything, but let me just log out and then I'll and then I'll move on to the drive. What's the you know pick the baud rate internet like that? Um right now I'm using it at twenty four hundred baud, but but Agent Friday over here, that guy, wrote a thirty eight four K baud driver and it works pretty sweet. Um, but right now I think it's just I don't know. We don't have a release of it just to integrate into any product, but we have it integrated into one of our programs. Okay. Uh, but I think probably at some point yeah. you're going to release that. And then it should work with all other software, maybe. I don't know. <coughs> oh, scene world number 23 is out. It says pausing. Oh, there we go. Ooh. Oh, I have email. All right, so I'm going to log out. Okay, so that's the BBS. I'm likely 
disconnected now. So on, on that end, it disconnected the IP connection. So I'm not connected to anywhere right now. So if I wanted to get back to Commodore server, I could just type ATD phone book one if I had that implemented, which I don't, or you can just type the IP address of Commodore server and port. Um, so any questions about that so far? I can show you the drive next. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to use this computer for the drive. I'll just scoot over. Um, oops. Not the SX. So this is going to show stuff happening over here because it's it's the firmware output stuff to the serial port for the for the drive just for my debugging purposes. But you can ignore it. It doesn't it wouldn't ever do anything like that in the in the real product. Um, so actually what I'll do is just unplug it from the 64 altogether. So you can see that we're we're not plugged into 64. We've got the IEC cable going to this computer. This is the USB for power, and then this is the Ethernet jack um, for Ethernet internet connection, and then the, the display. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is just load something. So load dollar comma nine. Yeah, of course it doesn't work. Probably because I unplugged it with four. Thus concludes the demo. <laughs> it's going to search all day because it's really slow. <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. I mean, I am kidding. Um, I, I don't think working. I can show you. What? It works sometimes. <laughs> it has worked. It worked 10 minutes ago before the demo. Um, any questions? Yeah. Uh, what is the estimated pricing on your various common products? Uh, okay, that's a good question. It's a question I don't know the answer to, but it's always been as cheap as possible. Um, I sold this original 64 for uh, $50 near the end there. And these probably will go up a little bit because I'm going to include this display, which has a pretty hefty price tag on it. Um, it's not going to be an option? Nope. It's going to be standard <coughs> on every device. And, um, yeah, I, it's, it's hard to say at this point. I have to get my price list now. I have to figure out how much it's going to cost to manufacture them. Because I'm not going to solder them. So uh, the Golden uh, Comets are already in the hands of the buyers already? Yes. So there were 12. and. Part of the deal was they get they get the prototype which they got, and then they get the production model when it's done. And uh, 
what so they'll actually your, be 24. What is your time frame or timeline for getting your products out commercially? Um, a hobby, so as soon as possible. The next two years? <laughs> I would like to have them done this year for sure. Oh, this year? Yeah. In 2014? 14, oh, wow. yeah. if I can, wow. yes. It's yeah. costly and timely, and I have obviously bugs to fix and features to implement. Yeah. Um, um, on various forums, people are asking you, know, can we connect our, our uh, Commodore wirelessly oh, yes. to, to the internet? I'm glad you asked. And I've been saying, well, talk to Greg or talk to PDS. CUG.org, because they, they go to like Starbucks and connect their SX64s wirelessly to over there. Right. But of course, they're just using like prototypes and they're not using the full commercial version yet. Right. Yeah, so I have, I have, um, I didn't talk about this. So on here, there's a, there's a little header right here. Okay. It's female header. And um, that will be on every device. And what that is is to be expanded so you can add things to it if things come up later that, that might enhance the usability of it. Um, and one of those is this Wi-Fi adapter. So I will sell these as an add-on, not stock, because they're kind of pricey too. Or you can just buy them from Adafruit. This is where I got it from. And it is micro PCI. No, it's just a it's just a little module, and I and I wired the header to be compatible with this, so you can plug it in and get Wi-Fi. Um, this this is sitting high. This red module is sitting high, but it will be lower to the board, and then this will just plug in and kind of hover over it, and then you get Wi-Fi instead of wired. So yeah. And the pricing of the module, do you think it'll be like twenty dollars? Adafruit sells these for about 30 so pricey. Uh, I'm actually going to look into integrating the components on the board. Um, since I'm getting them manufactured, it, it makes more sense to, to do it myself. Um, so that would just mean that it's got you know, a few surface mount capacitors and, and then this, this chip, which is, the, which is the, real, the real deal, which is the Texas Instruments chip. Um, the reason I bought the module is because this uses a special type of soldering method, which I can't do as a hobbyist. So um, I thought, well, I can just support the module, and if anyone wants to buy it, they can buy it from Adafruit, plug it in, and get it to work that way. Um, or I can sell them to separately. But if I if I can integrate it onto the board, I will, which would bring the cost way down, because these chips are, I think, are like four dollars. And then, and then they have like a couple supporting components on there, which are just cheap. Yeah. So, um, you mentioned three products. You could, could you summarize? There was the BBS, and then yeah. there was the drive. Yeah. And <coughs> the Comet 64. Okay, the original 64 in the new in the new form factor with God. the IEC, the serial bus, as well. I see my blue light came on, so I'm going to see if that means it works now. <coughs> it does. All right. Okay. So apparently there was some connection thing going on that didn't reset the internet connection. Um, so I just loaded the directory, which um, made it made a, it sent a command to Commodore server, which returned a list of um, disks in the virtual directory that I'm looking at on Commodore server. So I can go over to the, um, oh, actually, that, sorry, that's not the disk. That's the, that's the disk that's virtually inserted on Commodore server. It defaults to a disk that allows you to load stuff off of the, off of the boot disk. But um, I can send a special command with, with an exclamation point, which will show which will show the disks and folders in the public space. So uh, I'm going to go to the games games folder. To do that, it goes load slash games. And, and nine, 
9 I'm using for the internet device right now, so I'm accessing the internet every time I do 9, and it's all live streaming. There's no, nothing cached locally on the device. So here's a, since I changed directories, it, it had to send something back, so what it sends back is a list of the disks that are in that folder. So these are some of the games that are there. I'm just going to insert um, C64 Anibalt. I never loaded this this way, so it may, it may not work. C64 Anibalt. Right. So that the number sign or the pound sign, as we call it here in the US, uh, indicates insert this disk. So it inserted the disk, and when I type list, it'll show you the directory. And there's some garbage in there, but that's due to something else. Um, so there's two files here. I don't know which one. ENCR. We'll just load that one, I guess. Nine. So 64 blocks at 1541 speed, whatever that takes. About a, about a minute, probably. Um, I have plans to include the Jiffy DOS protocol so that you can use Jiffy DOS um, and get a little higher speeds on the loads. The bottleneck is is the IEC bus. It's not the, the internet, of course. So anyway, we're loading this. It's downloading data. Oh, yeah, so here's the display. So it says loading 75%, 77%. The counter is telling you how long it's going to be before it's done loading. Done. <clears throat> Should have listed. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So I just loaded that right off the internet. Didn't need a disk drive. That's the drive. <laughs> In case you're wondering, you can save files too. But I don't have save implemented yet. Um, it's very trivial since I already do it with V1541. Um, it's just a matter of sending the data, and I just don't have the code to, to pass it on yet. So, so you can save. Oh, another another question that someone else asked me earlier was, um, can you connect to other servers and get files besides from Commodore server? The answer is yes. It it streams, so what that means is you'll have to know the address, the URL, so to speak, of the file on the internet. So if someone has a website with a bunch of program files, um, you, you can set that address. I mean, it's kind of, a, you have to type it in, it's kind of long and everything, but, but it's possible. Um, the, other, the other thing is if there's a D64 on someone's site, um, I mean, you might as well just copy it to your own account or something, but it, the option is there to be able to, to grab the D64, download it, and stick it on the onboard flash. So, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, thanks for listening. Thank you, Greg. Uh,